Yeah, I've been working in Harlem for the last 35 plus years in various ways. I came as a lawyer, but then I got involved as a minister and started to ran a, a homeless shelter. And then as an entrepreneur, uh, some small businesses, got involved in some government work. Uh, and then my passion as, as a writer, I've been able to do plays, nonfiction books, which I, I've published and really excited about how God has allowed me to make a contribution to the community, make a difference in individual lives in uh, a number of different ways. Gosh, I guess my greatest accomplishment um, is my three kids, Ashley, Amber, and Paul Michael. Um, raising them has been a real joy in my life. I'm proud of the fact that I was able to go back to school and get my degree from Columbia University as an adult. I also have written a couple of books, Ambrose, which is a children's book, as well as Don't Give Up and Win, a survival guide to renewed virginity. Those things have been really precious to me, uh, as well as the CD that I produced called My Strength, My Song, which really shared my journey as a single mom and how the Lord got me through that time. I've been single and celibate now for going on 15 years. And it seems like a lot longer than that. I've been single and celibate uh, right now 19 years. The single years, um, they have many uh, levels of difficulty. You know, at first it was being single and figuring out how, how on earth am I going to raise these kids on my own. It was uh, trying to survive, you know. The hardest thing has been being patient and waiting on God. And it's been hard, but, you know, God has, uh, has shown up in, in such a magnificent way now that all I can say that it's, uh, it's been worth the wait. And I knew that I wanted someone who was kind, who loved God, who would have great dreams and aspirations for their lives. But it wasn't until 2017 that I actually wrote it down on a piece of paper, that I actually uh, thought about what I want my man to, to be like. My prayer was for a, a, a soulmate, you know, somebody who could, who could connect with me on multiple levels, especially in the areas of, um, of the spirit. I, mean, I, I wanted somebody to share that and to be able to go uh, deep with me in the spirit. And I'm sure I prayed over it, but then I put it away and I didn't find it until like a few days ago. And I was amazed as I looked at the characteristics that I put down and who Joseph is. It is the person that I prayed for. So I'm super thankful. <laughs>
this issue of singleness that I ever had with the Lord before. And I said, Father, I don't mind if you want me to be single. I just need to know. I don't want to be on the fence anymore. And um, closed my eyes, went to sleep. It was such a such a blessing that the, the very you know next day is uh, is when we met and we met in, in such a um, amazingly divine way. And. Next day, October 28th, my world changed instantly. I was looking for, searching for, for years, a church that would, would be my community. It would be the, the place that I could put roots, that I could stay forever. I felt led to go to Bethel, and from the moment I got there and started checking things out, I knew, I knew this was a place. And one of my responsibilities as an elder at Bethel is in the teaching ministry and I'm one of the teachers of the new members class. So once I, I said, okay, this is what I want to do, they said, well, you have to go to new believers class, new members class, to which I was like, what? I've been saved for like 30 years, <laughs> you know. Um, but I decided to be obedient and go to class and I walk into the second session and who's teaching the class but Mr. Joseph Holland, you know. And I was I was impressed with her knowledge of the word. Whenever I asked a question, uh, she not only answered it but had the biblical reference and had the uh, scriptural context. So I was really struck by that. Um, and at the end of the eight weeks, we exchanged cards because I have the television show, Don't Give Up and Win, mm -hmm. and he had some products, and I thought he could be a great guest. And I went my way, he went his. But after service that day, uh, as I'm walking to uh, 125th Street uh, to, to pick up some things on my way home, uh, I'm headed west on on uh, 124th Street, and she's on her way to the subway, to the to the train at 125th and, and Lenox, and she's walking north. I love the fall, it's my favorite season, and they happen to have pumpkins and haystacks out, and I just decided to be impromptu, which is not usually what I do on a Sunday. And I took some pictures and then I got back on the same side and I'm walking to the train station and who's coming up the other side of the block but Joseph Holland and I said hi and he said hi and we're all smiles. It was one of those um, divinely orchestrated moments and I say that and I call it the divine rendezvous because I usually don't go that way and she usually doesn't go that way and on this particular Sunday we, we both went a different way and ended up connecting. She asked me a question, which I couldn't answer in a couple of minutes on the street corner, and I told her that and said, do you have uh, a couple of minutes? Um, we could grab tea someplace. And knowing the prayer that I had the night before, I said yes. And then the most amazing thing happened. I said, ooh, Serengeti Tea, they just opened back up. I'd love to go there, I love, I love their, their tea. And he says, oh, I know that place, I know the owner. And we walk over, we get inside, we find a table, but before we could even say one word to each other, a friend of his, George, who hasn't seen him for you know, like 10 years, pulls up a chair and begins to talk with us and reminisce for one hour. <laughs> but uh, that was a God thing because George continued to tell us, or tell me rather, all the wonderful things about Joseph, the things that he's accomplished, done, served, uh, the type of person he was. It was God letting me know the type of person Joseph was so that when George did leave an hour later, <laughs> we could have a real conversation and that's what we did. You know, I didn't have 
and he garbs up. I wanted to know who was this man. And we sat there for another three hours until Serengeti was ready to close and we talked about everything. I walked away from that conversation probably knowing more <laughs> about him than anyone could know after one sitting. I think that was a confirmation. At least it felt that way to me and to her that we were receiving divine confirmation uh, through the conversation. And so it was becoming more and more intentional uh, as, as we talked uh, through that first long conversation that uh, this, this relationship was, was indeed going someplace because God's hand was on it. But what I loved was the most amazing part. He sat up at the end and he said, you know, both of us could have left a long time ago. And I'm not a dater. And I've been praying for a soulmate. And I want to know if you're willing to explore and see what God has here, what, what he's saying. And of course, knowing what my prayer request was just the night before, I wasn't playing any games. And I said, yes, I am willing to, to see where this goes. And our conversation has not ended from that day to now. That um, was, the, was the divine rendezvous. God showed up on that occasion. He's been showing up ever since. The divine rendezvous took place on a, on a Sunday after service, and I had been traveling uh, that weekend. I had uh, been down south, and there, there was some inclement weather, and the rain was supposed to continue for a few more hours, but all of a sudden, you know, it stopped, and there was a, a break in the clouds, and, and the sun came, came through, which I, I felt was, hmm, it caught my attention. That was a, uh, a curious occurrence, uh, given the weather report and given the, the timing of that moment. And I sensed, I said, hmm, there is a breakthrough of, of sunshine in the sky. Maybe there's a, a breakthrough of sunshine coming in my life. A little thought just went through my mind. Uh, and then I, then I moved on, but I came back to that uh, the very, very next day after I, uh, I had the Divine Rendezvous experience. I love it. When Joseph went home that night after we met, at Serengeti, he got a message on his voicemail that said that they did not need him to teach the next session of classes for the year. He didn't teach the session before and he didn't teach the session after. The only window of time that he was teaching was that eight week session that I came in. So to me, that was completely a God-orchestrated thing, so, yeah. I was looking for a, a soulmate, and it really turned out over the time of getting to know each other that you were that, that I call it that precious soulmate that God had prepared. It's not a matter of something happening like that, but it's through the course of what I had been through and then the course of what it, you had been through that we had then arrived at that uh, divine redeeming moment. You know, you are uh, compassionate and kind and generous and you're, you've been a true friend and have had my back. Um, and I don't know that I even really believed in the word soulmate, and now I absolutely do, and I've, I've found that treasure in you, and I'm so looking forward to our time together as husband and wife. We're just like so much else 
I, uh, I share that, uh, that great expectation of what we've been through so far, just being taken to uh, the higher ground. Here we are over a year later. I think you know what's about to happen.